With all of that information, we're ready to write our own web server. Uh, the book provides the tiny web server, and it only takes about 250 lines of code. Uh, this web server interprets a path plus a query in a couple of possible ways. One way is that slash path does not start in slash CGI bin. So in that case, a uh, tiny web server assumes that the path part refers to a file relative to where the, the web server was started. And so what it's going to do in that case is send the file content back as the reply data. It'll set a couple of header fields. It'll specify the content length so that the client knows how long that data is. And it'll also infer a content type based on the file extension of this path. So .gif will, will result in a content type of an image GIF, for example. So we can see that. Um, let's uh, run the tiny web server. So if I run it at port 8000, then I can start a web browser again. And if I go to localhost 8000 this time, um, I can get uh, godzilla.gif. And we get an image back because that file does exist relative to the tiny server. If we look at the directory here, there's called a little GIF. So that's why that gets sent. If we give it uh, an empty path, then the tiny web server assumes home.html and uh, home.html has this HTML in it, which refers to Godzilla.gif. So the server makes a second client to get that. So that's what you see here. The server made a connection to, um, let's see, to get, the server made a connection to get the web page with an empty path. Um, and then it made another connection to get Godzilla.gif and so on to build up the view that you see here. So that's what Tiny does with paths that doesn't start with CGI bin. It serves static content, just individual files. On the other hand, if path does start CGI bin, then it assumes that the path refers to an executable. And if we go back to Tiny here and look at the CGI bin directory, then it has a program called Adder, which um, is going to add numbers. And that program Um, we'll receive, let's look at it in an editor instead. So that adder is going to receive any query arguments in the query string environment variable. So a tiny server is going to set query string, uh, and then the program itself is responsible for generating the HTML content or whatever kind of content to go back. We can try this out by going back to the web browser and using CGI bin adder, and then um, we just run adder, then um, well, we need to give it arguments uh, like 2 and 7, and then it adds them up for us by running that separate adder executable. So CGI bin uh, triggers this dynamic content, that is the, the web server is going to run another process, which of course we know how to do using fork and exec.